Hi everybody. Um, we are back with a blade so black. Um, and basically so much has happened already that um, you need to go back and listen to the first one and catch up because otherwise uh, you're gonna be a little bit lost. It's super exciting. Um, and we are only on chapter one, um, which is called, Here We Go. Alice ran her fingers over the ivory handles of the daggers on the desk in front of her. Cold light filled the blades, their surfaces more like silvered glass than steel. You'd think after three months of knowing Ad Addison had a, she wouldn't be surprised whenever he pulled random weapons out. Pretty. She plucked one up and raised her eyebrows. Light. What are they? Figment blades. Addison dug around in the drawers where he sat on the other side of the desk. The old metal rattled and creaked. For real? She trailed her fingers over the flat of one of the glittering blades, the only things capable of killing nightmares. She'd never held one before or seen one, really. They'll help focus your muchness. Munch what now? Muchness. He slammed a drawer, then jumped with a curse, shaking out his hand. Your muchness, to be precise. The fingers he shoved into his mouth muffled the words. The part of you that believes in yourself, even when the rest of you doesn't. Alice blinked a few times, then set the dagger down. Right, they look a little small for killing monsters. She'd only ever seen one nightmare, when Addison rescued her the night her dad died. While it wasn't huge, it was big enough to be scary as all hell. That's not what matters, he slammed another drawer. The weapon is only part of the equation, a small part. The desk took up most of the cramped space he called his office, more like a slightly large broom closet along with the small love seat Alice sat perched on. There were a couple lamps, but the place was mostly bare. No file cabinets, no computer, just a little shelf in the corner with a funky teapot on it. Says the dude who carries around a big F off sword. She glimpsed the black blade a couple times since that night. When he wasn't fighting monsters, Addison kept it in a metal locker that filled a corner of his office. Aha! Addison straightened and set a leather belt beside the daggers. The sheaths strapped to it clapped together. You'll have to be specific. I have many swords. There was a room in the back of this very building full of weapons, but they were blunted for training. Alice twisted her lips to the side and leveled a look at him. You know the one I'm talking about. Do I? Addison? So many. Addison? Well, firstly, it's not a figment blade, and secondly, I'm not human, meaning I don't have muchness, so I need a little something extra. According to Addison, he could destroy a nightmare's physical body, but it would just reform after a while. Since nightmares were a manifestation of humanity's fears, humans were the only ones who could put them down permanently. That's why people like him trained people like her. And last, you play too much. She narrowed her eyes at him, but there was no real heat behind it. Talking about some, you'll have to be specific. Specific these. Addison grinned, his dimples popping into view as he came around from behind the desk and tilted against the front of it. In the harsh, fluorescent lighting, his hair was dark green, his eyes a subtle thought, somewhat rainbowy gray. Piercings lined his left ear, shining silver as he cocked his head to the side. Metal glinted over the rest of him, too. The studs in his shirt at the shoulders, the chain around his hips, the zippers and buckles on his boots, a punk rock Prince Charming. Damn, he was fine. Lucky for him. She turned her attention to the weapons, picking one up. The ivory warm in her palm. This what you wanted to show me? I mean, they're cool and all, but you made it sound like you had some big surprise set up. Those are now yours, love. Alice nearly dropped the dagger. For real? He nodded, his smile widening. You're ready. She jerked straight in her chair. So soon? I wouldn't call three months soon, but yeah. I knew there was something special about you. He angled forward, closing off a bit of the space between them. Heat filled Alice's face. She turned her attention to the weapons, hoping he couldn't see her blush. Not that she actually turned red or anything. She don't blush for real, for real. Special how? Well, you were able to see me, for one thing. She smiled. Hard to miss a dude stabbing a monster to death three feet in front of you. That's not the... 
I'm trying to be serious and give you a compliment. May I get through my serious compliment? Alice lifted her hands, fighting laughter. Excuse the hell out of me for having eyeballs that somehow, um, that somehow see me even when I mean not to be. Addison narrowed his eyes before folding his arms over his chest. Nope, never mind. Moment's ruined. I now deem you unspecial. Give the daggers back. Wait! The laughter burst free. Nope, damage is done. Come on, hand them over. No, no, Alice said, still laughing as she waved off his reaching hands. No, I'm trying. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And they're so fragile. He grabbed for one of the daggers. Wait! She pressed her hand over his, still snickering. Go on, serious compliment away. He watched her, his eyes crinkling at the corners as he fought his own smile. Where was I? I was special. She wiggled her eyebrows. He finally chuckled. Right then, lifting her hand and the dagger she still clutched, he curled her fingers around it and his fingers around hers. I knew you were special. That's why I told you about the veil, the monsters that cross it and my duty to stop them. Well, my duty to train someone to stop them. I've trained three others before you and none of them learned so quickly. It was a pleasant surprise. Hal if Addison was surprised, she was floored. He gave her a sword to start, and it was like she'd been carrying the thing her whole life. Maybe not her whole life. She did smash a table once and a few chairs, on accident. But when she got her hands on a pair of daggers, that was a whole different story. It was like in the movies, where someone says something about becoming one with the weapon, blah, blah. It's an extension of your body, blah. No joke, it really felt like that. Like her body somehow knew what to do. She still had to practice, though. A lot. I had motivation. More like a need to beat the hell out of something ever since her dad died. Whenever Alice was alone, she was just so angry. She swallowed it, bottled it up. Her mom needed her. Her grandma needed her. She got through the funeral. She got through the first days back at school. She cried. She hugged it out. But she wanted to punch things. So when Addison presented her with a chance to be like him, to kill monsters that crept across what he called the veil, a border between the real world and the world he came from. A realm of dreams called Wonderland. Well, she called him crazy. Then she apologized. That was rude. But she'd seen the monster. She'd smelled the damn thing. She'd felt its breath hot on her face, and after going back to that alley near the hospital the next week and seeing that stain on the concrete, after talking with him out in the open and noticing how no one else seemed to notice him, she decided to take him up on his offer. Alice? Addison's voice sliced through her thoughts. Hmm? What? She blinked up at him, her cheeks warm again. Sorry. Right in the middle of my serious complimenting? He huffed, but she could tell he didn't mean it. Where'd you go this time? I was thinking about that night and meeting him, but that night was safer and how everything changed. Hmm, well, it's about to change again. Strap those on. He gestured to the daggers and pushed away from the desk. Alice fought with the belt for a few seconds before managing to get it fastened around her waist. Her hands shook, a combination of nerves and excitement. For three months, she'd been coming here, learning how to fight with a handful of blunt weapons. When she figured those out, Addison said he would give her real ones and take her across the veil. Now it was happening, like for real, for real. These were real daggers hanging from her hips. She pressed her fingertips to the hilts again, just to make sure. Dude, this is really going down. She took a slow breath. Keep it together, Kingston. You ready? Addison stood at the door, holding it open for her. Alice swallowed and nodded. Yeah, yeah. She followed him out into the hall. Need to let Maddie know we're going through. <clears throat> He led the way out to the main part of the building that had served as her training grounds. The Looking Glass pub was every bit the midtown Atlanta dive it pretended to be, from the mirrored wall of liquor behind the bar to the pool tables, high top tables and chairs grouped on the worn wood floor. Strategically mounted TVs meant you could see a number of shows or games from any spot on the floor. Her first time here, she didn't believe this was some secret gateway to another world. It just looked like a bar. Looks can be deceiving, which is the point. Addison had said. A patchwork of memorabilia from ages past covered the pub's walls. Hats, 
pocket watches, monocles, beat up old canes and parasols, photographs of flappers in Paris in World War II, uh, vats in London, an autographed picture of someone named the Big Bopper, a cacophony of sight. A cat-shaped clock hung on the wall behind the bar, the creepy kind with huge eyes swish back and forth while the tail wags to mark the passing seconds. Black stripes covered its dark purple body. A grin spread beneath its wiry whiskers. Tick, 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 tick. Underneath the clock, Maddie mopped the countertop in slow, lazy circles with a dingy rag. A mousy girl with a round, brown face. She was the pub's bartender, although Alice believed she took more naps than she mixed drinks. On cue, Maddie yawned, covering her mouth with the rag. Alice grimaced. Gross. Like Addison, Maddie was from Wonderland. The two of them were stationed here to keep an eye on one of four openings in the veil called, veil called Gateways. As a front, they opened the Looking Glass, a functioning bar with drinks and food and regulars, which just happened to have a portal to another realm in the back. Addison owned it. He and Maddie looked young, late teens, early 20s, but they were both super old, like immortal old. Still fine, though. They looked like regular people until you got a good look at them, especially their eyes. Madeline? Addison knocked against the bar as he stepped up to it. I'm taking Alice through. Maddie blinked her big blue eyes slowly. With each fall of her lids, the color of her irises shifted. First green, then brown. Whistle while you work? Yep, she's ready. A thrill slid through Alice at those words. She'd worked so hard, so many long hours, sleepless nights, and sore as hell days. This was it, though. She made it. She just had to keep telling herself that and to breathe. Addison ducked around behind the bar, glass clinking as he searched for something. He emerged with three small vials of purple liquid, most likely Maddie's handiwork. The girl was a bomb poet, but not in the still I rise way. In Wonderland, poets were like witches or wizards, mixing potions and wielding the magical essence of the realm in spells called verses. Alice never saw Maddie do more than mix mild potions to help Alice heal faster after training. Still, the stronger the poet, the more potent the verse, and the weirder they talked as a result. Alice figured Maddie was powerful as hell, the way she barely made sense half the time. Hold the fort. We'll be back in a tick, Addis said. Maddie saluted the rag with the rag. There weren't human-like races in Wonderland, at least not the way it was in the real world, but people had different skin tones and features. Maddie, with her warm copper complexion and high, round cheekbones, looked almost Latina to Alice. Addison was white, like super white, saying stuff like, in a tick. They both spoke English, Spanish, French, Japanese, Russian, pretty much every other language on the planet. That's what happens when your homeland is the collective unconscious of the entire world. Hadda offered Alice's arm. Let's go, love. While the front of the building housed the pub, the back was a labyrinth of hallways and random rooms. Bathrooms, bedrooms, a kitchen. Hadda and Maddie lived here after all. There was even a room that looked like a hotel somewhere downtown, had windows and everything. It was fake. The building was magic, but still, it was wild. Alice wondered which one of these rooms held the gateway. She'd never seen it, and now she had that feeling like getting ready to open Christmas presents. Giddy, bubbly, and kind of worried that you wouldn't like what you got. It was as if her stomach didn't know if it wanted to do the butterfly thing or tie itself in knots. It left her feeling gassy and decidedly unhero-like. Keep it together, Kingston. Addison stopped in front of a ratty-looking door. Inside, he flipped on the light. Alice blinked, staring at the buckets in the corner and the shelves lined with stacks of toilet paper, towels, and cleaning supplies. The sharp scent of bleach hit her nose. A broom closet? Was he playing with her? The last place you'd look for an in interdimensional doorway, right? Addison bowed and waved her in. After you, milady. Shaking her head, Alice stepped into the narrow space. Addison followed, shutting the door behind them. And now you gotta wait till next time to find out what it's like in there. <laughs>